we all know that the kinetic energy and the potential energy of a spring mass system is given by these expressions. And we also know that the kinetic energy and potential energy of a simple pendulum is given by these equations. And hence, what you can easily see from these two examples is that the kinetic energy and potential energy of any simple harmonic oscillator in general will be given by these two equations. We also know that the total energy of any simple harmonic oscillator is equal to the sum of its kinetic and potential energy. Now, since only conservative forces act on any simple harmonic oscillator, the total energy of the simple harmonic oscillator is going to remain constant in time. That means the time derivative of uh, the total energy of a simple harmonic oscillator will be equal to zero. Upon uh, rearranging the terms of this equation, I can uh, reduce it to the equation of a simple harmonic motion, which will look something like this. This is exactly the equation of the simple harmonic motion, except that omega squared, which is the square of the angular frequency of the simple harmonic oscillator, is replaced by A upon B. And that simply means that omega squared is equal to A upon B. From the potential energy and kinetic energy terms that I had written on top, you can easily see that the value of A and B for the spring mass system and the simple harmonic oscillator will be given by these expressions. And hence, what you can see is that the angular frequency of the spring mass system and the simple pendulum will be given by these expressions. And hence, what we find is this interesting trick, where if you know the kinetic energy and the potential energy of a simple harmonic oscillator, you can easily find its angular frequency and hence its time period.